Well, good afternoon, everybody. It's time for Facebook Live again here at Select Sires. My name is Kevin Jorgensen, one of the Sire team here at uh, Select Sires, and glad to be with you today. Uh, obviously, uh, working remotely again from uh, Remote Mission Control in Waupon, Wisconsin. Uh, hopefully, everything will go well. Um, be on my own without my support team, but um, really looking forward to visiting with you this afternoon. And uh, obviously, a lot of crazy things going on in the world these days. And I uh, want you first to know that all of you that are out there in the agriculture world, particularly in the dairy world, uh, we feel what you're going through. We bleed when you bleed. Uh, our group of people are uh, just doing some amazing things um, with uh, where we're at, uh, uh, working to, to serve you on a daily basis, getting ourselves uh, to be able to serve you, get product to you. Our the guys in the labs and the barns are working overtime and uh, just doing a marvelous job. Uh, certainly want to throw a shot as well. Uh, spent a lot of time in Italy and our good friends at COSAPAM, uh, they've gone to, through and endured a lot and, and our heart goes out to those guys and they're a big part of our team. And so we're really excited about uh, uh, giving a shout out to them today as well. So not only on behalf of myself, but the entire team at SelectSires know that, uh, that we're thinking about you every day. And uh, as I said, you, we bleed when you bleed and we're all in this together. But let's turn the subject. Let's talk about something a little different. Let's just depart from everything else going on in the world here for for a while, and let's just talk about some fun stuff. And let's let's talk about uh, uh, the bulls and and where they're headed. Uh, sire summaries was a lot of stuff going on this week. Uh, obviously, uh, with the sire summaries and the changes that are out there, um, going to start first off just kind of giving a little background on the base change, how it affected everything. Um, and so if we look at the base change in and of itself, they would given us some estimates ahead of the uh, sire summaries of where it was going to be. Let me give you just some statistics of things that, that how they move back. So proven bulls and genomic bulls are just a little bit different. But if we look at, geno at proven bulls first, the average change on milk, they went down 423 pounds of milk. Uh, productive life went down 1.7. Uh, DPR was down about 0.2. On um, PTAT on type was down uh, about 0.81 and 0.92 in utter composite. And ironically, there was an increase in TPI of about 37 TPI points. The reason for this is, is that uh, there's a constant in the TPI formula. And so that's added to it to try to keep things consistent. And realistically, what happened was that uh, maybe the, the constant should have been a little lower. The thing to remember of all of this is, is its relative rank. I've had a lot of questions about this in the last couple of days. And realistically, if you look at your high heifers from a month ago and look at how they rank within your herd today, they're pretty much identical. Uh, there was not a lot of shift of the rank of those females. And so you need to keep in mind that it's a relative rank. That's what genetics have always been. And so as long as the highest bull is the highest bull, that's really what matters. So I just wanted to touch on that. On the uh, net merit side, we lost 241 net merit dollars on the proven bulls. So again, instead of being a thousand net merit, maybe now they're they're uh, 750, but it's very very close to where it was. Then on young bulls, uh, they actually went down about 432 pounds of milk, 1.8 on productive life, 0.3 on DPR. 0.82 on type, 0.9 on utter composite, and went up uh, 41 TPI points again, as I just mentioned. The other thing to keep in on young bulls for net merit, they changed negative 240. So again, I think we've said this before when we've had some crazy things happen, that genetics is all about relative rank. Are you number one? If Helix was 20, he's 29.97 and the number one proven bull in the breed, he was 2,800 and he's still number one. That's really what matters. And, that, and I think that's really what you should keep in mind as you look at the data. It'll take us a few days to get our heads wrapped around this again to, to know <clears throat> who's high or who your highest females uh, are how in the breed. But just take a couple of minutes, look at the data, uh, wait for the list to come out. Uh, there has been a little bit of delay from Holstein USA. I haven't seen the official top 100 list yet. 
uh, some of the other lists. But again, based on the high ranking sire report, the bulls that did really well in the breed rank best. Bulls have changed, moved a little bit. But in all honesty, I would say this sire summary was a pretty calm day in terms of the industry. There weren't dramatic changes, not big re-ranks throughout the industry. I think what we saw was the base change doing its job. We do it once every five years. And that just kind of reset the, the starting line uh, like an NASCAR race. And we're back to the cow population that zero was born in 2015 instead of 2010, and we'll do this again, and these reductions that I mentioned to you is basically the amount of genetic progress we made in the last five years. So hopefully uh, you feel good about that and you'll feel like things are uh, still moving forward in your genetic breeding program. So like I said, that's just a little bit about the base change. The other thing that I wanted to mention was just a little bit of update to the TPI formula in and of itself. They did add some um, I made a couple of changes. One of them is that fat and protein are now weighted equally at 19% uh, each in the formula. And I think this is a good change because in milk markets these days, sometimes fat is more um, valuable, sometimes protein is more valuable. What we know is that they're both really important and we should have emphasis on both of them. And I think with that change in the TPI formula, that's more reflective of, of where we really should be moving uh, throughout the industry. The other thing they did do is add in uh, leg side view back into the foot and leg composite with an intermediate optimum. And again, uh, applaud that. I think it's a good thing. Uh, we need to get cows not too straight or not too sickled. We need them in the middle. And uh, so to make uh, leg side view an intermediate optimum and, and have that back in, I think was again, a welcome change. So that was uh, one of the other things that, that occurred within the formula changes that had uh, less to do with data changes or daughters adding uh, information uh, and calving in. Uh, that was a formula change. The other thing that you'll notice is calving ease uh, looks a little different. Uh, the average, they did some changes to how they're calculating calving ease. Uh, you can see some of that stuff at CDCB if you care to uh, look at it in more detail. But the reality is, is that the average of uh, uh, calving ease in December was 7.2, it's now 7.7. .7. So you're gonna see some bulls that, that made some changes, uh, but over time, those bulls, uh, as they get more data, uh, we find out really if they are a Cavanese bull or not. And I'm gonna use an example of a bull I'll talk about in a moment ago that's had a bit of a roller coaster through his career and uh, is now breed average. So all in all, I thought really, really uh, an exciting day and everything is, is, is going very, very well. Just a little bit of quick overview of the Select Sires lineup, Generations Accelerated lineup um, throughout the industry before I talk about some of the new bulls. Um, Helix, no matter what you do to the formula, no matter what you do to the changes, uh, that bull is, is special. He continues to be the number one TPI bull in the breed. Um, nearly $3,000 in his proof now. And at $29.97, he's the number one uh, TPI bull in the breed and is actually still 204 pounds of combined fat and protein, just light years ahead of everybody else. He and Duke both are just special, special, special bulls when it comes to combined fat and protein. So Helix regain, remained the number one TPI bull in the breed, a bull we talked about last time in Rocket Fire. He had a tremendous day, went uh, up very, actually up against the base change. He went up in his production proof and moved up to the number three spot in the TPI list. And I'm not sure he's done because his daughter yield deviation is actually still higher than what his milk proof is at 2836 of milk and 85 pounds of protein. So he had a marvelous day. Um, Silver Griff, top 10 bull last time, moved up to number four this time. So he had an exceptional day as well. So we've got uh, three bulls in the top 10, 17 in the top 50, uh, approximately, like I say, don't have the official list yet, but I think that's, that's very, very close. Our bulls had a fantastic day in Canada. We've got four of the top 10 LPI bulls uh, north of the border and I'm very excited about that. Uh, and, and again, uh, a bull I'll talk about in a little bit was a, an exciting new addition to both the LPI and the TPI list. And on the genomic young bull list in Canada, uh, just a, a, a dominating performance of 14 of the top 20 bulls, uh, not all of them available yet, but will soon be. And bulls like Magnitude and Renegade, they're in our next gen program right there at the top of the list, not only here in the States, but in Canada as well. So 
all in all, we were very, very pleased with the run, how the Bulls performed. We didn't have a lot of surprises, and uh, that's always good to see. Uh, another Bull I'll mention is, is uh, uh, Maleri uh, Joseph Frazzle. He added 1,700 daughters to his proof in one summary. That's a big amount of data. He now has over 3,000 daughters in his proof. Still in the top 30 TPI bulls in the breed. His under composite relative to the base change actually got a little better. Uh, truly one of the real special bulls of the breed. And uh, you, I don't have to tell you guys that because you uh, find him and, and every unit of semen that he has is, is, is spoken for. So uh, all in all, really, really good day in terms of uh, how things went out. I'd like to spend just a couple of minutes talk about some of the new graduates we brought in. We brought in 10 new graduates in Holsteins uh, through all three of the, the product lines, uh, both generations uh, accelerated in, and the Select Series product line. I'm gonna start with the first bull today of a new graduate that is uh, a top 15 new graduate, should be about number 12 when uh, we get the data officially. And his a 7H12886 OCD Denver Cannon. It's a Denver Sun. Uh, from an Uno, from a Robust, it's very good. And then the great Larcrest Crimson Cow, the 94 point Ramos out in Minnesota. Uh, just a marvelous, marvelous cow. And so he's got a right to be good. He's bred with really, I think, uh, appealing bulls in his pedigree. He's a bull that's over 1,200 pounds of milk. He's 123 pounds of combined fat and protein. So if you were selecting for 150 before, he'd be right in that uh, neighborhood today. At 2,800 uh, TPI, as I said, be a top 15 uh, TPI bull in the breed. He's 1.94 on udder composite. Would have made him almost three points on udders uh, in the old system. So he's a special bull when it comes to udder improvement. He's also a bull that does well on daughter pregnancy rate. He's plus 0.7 there and a really appealing linear profile. I think you'll like this bull. I think he'll be quite easy to use. And uh, I really feel confident that this is a really – a great addition to our, our proven lineup and, and a bull with, with 100 daughters in his proof. So a uh, good amount of data and, and so very, very happy with Cannon. And, and so he's a, uh, the first of our new graduates. The second graduate, a bull that I, is very, very near and dear to my heart, a bull that was very popular as a super sampler, used him as a sire father, 7H12942 Blumenfeld Jedi Resolve. Uh, this bull uh, debuts in the top 35 uh, for TPI, he's 2739. He's over 1,300 pounds of milk at 1381. He's 100 pounds of combined fat and protein. But here's where this bull really shines. He's exceptional and proves all mass tightest traits. He's 2.68 on cell score. He's plus 1.7 on CDCB mass tightest, and he's 102 on zoetis mass tightest as well. So he's going to make healthy cows. On top of that, He's been a sire conception specialist. He's 1.1 in his SCR, so he gets cows pregnant. He's got a really solid linear profile. He's a Jedi son from a very, very outcross cow family. I can remember about four and a half years ago, traveling to Northern Minnesota, uh, way up in the Northern part to a robotic dairy, uh, Blumenfeld Holsteins up in Holly, Minnesota. to look at this day daughter as a young cow and uh, he would, this bull was made when, when uh, that day was a two-year-old. Uh, she was already fresh, so it wasn't working a young heifer. She was just blew me away. Loved the cow and the freestyles. And what I really liked about her was she was sired a little different. She was a day daughter from a very good sharky, from a very good outside. And that cow family uh, is just uh, not very far away from me here in eastern Wisconsin where it originated from. So I knew the cow family really well. And uh, we made the mating to Jedi. It's turned out exceptionally well. And he's a bull that, as we've been traveling before uh, everything changed here this winter and seeing a lot of cows, I've seen a lot of these milk and resolved daughters, and they're really, really nice cows. And so he's, he's a bull I would tell you you could use with confidence. Now, this Cavanies thing, I wanted to point a bull like Resolve out. I looked up his history yesterday. When he was a baby calf and got his first evaluation, he was 7.5 on cavities. Then as things were on and Jedi got a little higher on cavities, this bull jumped up to 9.3. So when we were using this bull as a sire father, he was a bit on the high side for cavities. Now today, with 120 milk and daughters in this proof and thousands of calves born, he's 7.7. .7, and that's right at breed average. So again, take it for what it's worth in terms of cavities. You probably should use a bull that's 
seven or below and on your heifers, the rest of it I think comes out in the wash. But Resolve's a bull that we're really excited about. I, I've always liked this bull and I love the cow family and really great to see that he's debuting in the top 35 for TPI. I mentioned a moment ago that we had a really exciting graduate on the LPI list. And this bull is 250H13531 SS Millington Totem. He's the number three bull in the breed in Canada for our friends north of the border. So he's a, he's a rock star north of the border, but he's also a top 30 TPI bull here in the States. He's a bull that's BB and Kappa casing, so he's friendly to the cheese markets. He's 108 pounds of combined fat and protein with 136 daughters in his proof. He's 1.82 on tight, 1.56 on udders, and over a point and foot in leg. The bull's got a marvelous linear profile, and he's also a mastitis rock star being 2.59 on cell score, 2.2 on CDC being mastitis, and he's also 105 on zoetis mastitis. So I think a bull that, that really checks a lot of boxes. The other nice part about this bull is from a great, great maternal line. He's a Millington son. He's been a top 100 TPI sire for since his debut, uh, Robust Miles' son. And the mother's an, uh, a good plus young cow by JC named Sky. She had a big record. The next dam's the very good Sudan and then Planet Silk. So this cow family's gave us a lot of bulls in the industry. I like the fact that it's a very outcross pedigree, has no frazzled in this pedigree, has no Jedi, no modesty, no Yoder. Gives you a lot of opportunities to use this bull and one of the highest ranking bulls that's out there. Take a look at this bull's linear profile. I think he's really, really modern, right-sided, does everything right, doesn't make teeth too, too short. A really, really exciting bull that I think will be a, a favorite of our SMS evaluators as well as a lot of our customers just because of a high ranking bull, a little different pedigree. The next bull, I could spend the rest of our Facebook Live on this topic. And that is 250H12961, Woodcrest King Doc. This bull is certainly one of the, the best bulls that we've had an opportunity to, to talk about. You have found him. He has sold over a quarter of a million units as a genomic young sire. And I can tell you this, you won't be disappointed to use them. And I'd suggest you maybe use some more. I've got a picture behind me here, if you can see, that I put up today, which is a, a shot done a few years ago by Pam Nunes uh, when we were celebrating Durham. And I truly believe that we have not had a bull in the select sires lineup since Durham like King Doc. He's a bull that's gonna meet the needs of both the commercial producer, as well as the, the uh, discriminating type breeders. They work in free stalls. He's made daughters that are already nominated All-American. He's gonna make some more. And I wish we could have worked it out today that I could add some, some PowerPoint slides because I'd love to show you the photos. Check out our website of the daughter photos on King Doc. Uh, what we are seeing is, is nothing short of amazing. So he graduated this time with 100 daughters in his proof. He's 13, 18 on milk, and his daughter yield deviation is better than that. So I don't think that he's done at 1,300 of milk. He's 103 pounds of combined fat and protein. He should be a top 10 type bull in the breed at 3.10. He's 2.23 in utter composite. And if you can find a better linear, I challenge you, because it's right everywhere where you want it to be. Adds a little teat length, doesn't make high pins, has got beautiful feet and legs. They're tall, but not too tall. This bull is going to be special. Your ability to use this bull uh, in a variety of situations, I think you're really going to be excited about this bull. And uh, I hope you're, as more and more of them calve in, it isn't very often I can run across the countryside and not have somebody that may be at one of the best bulls we have. The bull behind me, Durham. When he was, uh, there were people that didn't like Durham. Nobody says anything. King Doc, and that's really, really uh, rare, and I think it's for good reason, because I think the bull is really the real deal, and he's also, I didn't even mention this yet, he's going to be in the top 60 TPI bulls in the breed. I mean, he's he's right there with the best of them, and, and like I said, the last bull that had a crossover opportunity like this was the bull behind me, and that was Durham. Next bull that's graduated, um, bull that should be familiar to a lot of people, he was a popular young sire, 7H12868. Plain old Joe Super Advance. He is a full brother to 
uh, Jaguar, who's in our lineup already, as well as his maternal brother, King Royal, who's another great, great customer satisfaction specialist. Advance is 119 pounds of combined fat protein, really good on percents. He's plus whole eight and plus 0.13 on, on, on that. So I think that's really uh, a nice job in that respect. He's 2682 on his TPI. That'll make him a top 100 TPI sire. He's been a fertility rock star. He's 1.3 on his uh, sire conception rate, and that's on about 30,000 breedings. And going to work really well in those commercial environments where you want a more moderate sized cow with a really sound linear profile. And uh, his dam is Mogul Moriah. She was a cow that uh, one of the best mobile daughters I've ever seen down at Steve Busher's in Ohio. And then traces back into the same cow family that gave us Robust, the next name's a 91 point Socrates, and then uh, Old Man Mirror herself. So it's a great, great pedigree. It's a great cow family and a familiar one because we've had, uh, he's got two maternal and full brothers that are in the active lineup already. That was uh, Advance. Another bull that I've seen a lot of daughters of is the next bull, another top 100 TPI sire, 7H12999, welcome tell Brennan. Brennan was one of the early modesty sons, and they're uh, now graduate. This bull's now graduate. I've seen a lot of these this winter, and I can't say that I've seen a bad one. They're really good uttered. They're doing really well. He's another really good percent uh, fat and protein bull. He's right at uh, 98 pounds of combined fat and protein, so right tight to 100. It's 1.68 on utter composite. That's his calling card. They're really good uttered cows. They move really well on their feet and legs. Uh, just been no holes, can't pick apart. They're the kind of cows that, that, that as I walk through the stalls this winter, uh, you always find them and, and they're always really nice cows. Well, again, that we use as sire father and there's a couple of his sons uh, already coming out. So I think that's uh, really good as well. And he fits uh, both our robot pro designation as well as our feed pro designation. designation. Another really good graduate there in Brennan. Another bull that but a couple bulls into the active lineup this time that are uh, only production data only, and we'll get tight data in August. And the first one of those is 7H12974 Sandy Valley Copycat. A couple of these bulls, we had seen enough daughters of them to say, there's no need to wait, no need to hold them. Let's just bring it into the marketplace. And Copycat was one of those bulls. Uh, we just pictured some of these. And again, check out the website and see uh, the milk and daughter photos on this bull. They've been really, really good. Uh, Greg Bauer has been telling me for months how much he likes uh, his copycat daughters at, at Sandy Valley Farms, and I can't wait to get back up there again, but it's been a while through all, uh, all of this. He's got a right to be. He's, he's a Jedi son with a different pedigree bottom side. Mother's a JC that's very good. The next stand's a very good super. Then Cosmopolitan at, at uh, Larkra. So back into the, the Cosmos again, and a bull that just, you look at his linear, moderate-sized cows with beautiful udders, and that's what we see on a consistent basis. He's also a BB Kappa casing bull, so again, should be friendly to the cheese markets, a bull that I think is going to have a really widespread appeal, and, and I'm really looking forward to seeing this bull's tight data because from what we've seen thus far, I think you're going to like him really well. Another bull in that same uh, ballpark is 14H in our accelerated lineup, 14H7828, peak at Cell Odin. Odin is an Alta Hot Rod son. Uh, from a cow family, again, that we're very familiar with here at Select Sires because Odin is a maternal brother to uh, the modesty son, Roland, that's been very, very popular for us and been used as a sire father. Uh, the bull comes out uh, just with a production date again, but he's got 228 milking already. And he's a bull that has uh, 100 pounds of combined fat and protein. Again, very, very good on his percents, plus 0.25 on fat percent. And he's 27.99 in his GTPI. That would put him, uh, if he had a tight proof, that'd put him right near the top uh, 20, 30 bulls of the breed. He's always been a good fertility bull. He's plus 0.12 on uh, sire conception rate, and he's plus on daughter uh, DPR as well. But the best part about Odin, 5.9 on cavity. So a bull you can obviously use on heifers with a lot of confidence, and that's on a lot of breedings. And uh, again, I encourage you to look at his uh, linear and the sire director on the website. Uh, a really, really appealing bull. And again, goes back to the same cow family as McCutcheon, the Chardonnay cow family, if you go back deep enough. So I think a really, really nice addition as well. A bull that we had a couple bulls that kind of meet some unique designations. And the first one of those is 7H12872 Pride Spark Trump. And he is a bull that, uh, again, acquired up in Northwest Wisconsin. 
His mother was a really, really good young cow, a very good bookum daughter, and then goes back uh, to a really good cow family bred in, in Western Wisconsin. And he's a bull that's at 1,500 pounds of milk, 2625 in his GTPI. Where this bull really shines is on the Zoetta streets. This bull is a, is a DWP rock star. Uh, he's the number two proven bull we've got. Uh, he and Passat are the two highest DWP proven bulls that we have at 978. And he's 109 in mastitis and, and just huge on all his other Zoetis traits. So I think you're going to like that really well. He's a bull that reduces stature. He's over a point minus on stature. So if you want cows to be more moderately sized, you want to take some stature out, this is a bull that will do that really, really well. And then the last of the new graduates, uh, a bull again from a familiar cow family uh, in the accelerated product line, 14H7784 cookie cutter P ball Hector. He's a Powerball son that's a big league production bull. 1865 of milk, 115 pounds of combined fat protein, 7% on his calving ease. And he's a bull that's a Powerball from an excellent predestined daughter right out of uh, Global Cow of the Year, uh, Man O' Man Halo. And we all know the story of all the H bulls and particularly Helix. And this bull love adds to that big set of bulls that come from that beautiful, beautiful cow family in uh in uh, New York at Cookie Cutter and goes all the way back uh, to the Della Cow family like Durham behind me. So that's the new grads that we wanted to talk about. I'm going to get through here now and see uh, what we've got here for some of the uh, um, some of the uh, questions here because we want you to ask questions. We've got a question here from James Duthie. Will Renegade or some of his sons be available in the UK? Yes, uh, the Next Gen program and I'll talk about Next Gen here in a couple moments. Uh, we're working on some of the final details there, but the Renegade Sons uh, are starting to make semen. We're using several of them as sire fathers at the moment, and I think you can expect that later on here in 2020 that there'll be some of those Renegade Sons that are made available, uh, and and a couple of them uh, that we just uh, released here um, in, in the next couple of months. So I think uh, you're going to see uh, Renegade Sons really good there. Uh, Brent Calmer asked, what are the best robotic bulls? Well, I mentioned a couple of them a moment ago. I think Resolve is going to do a great job in, a ro in robotic facilities because he's bred in a robotic facility. That cow family has, has been there at Blumenfeld for a very long time, but uh, they select and, and had been selecting for this in anticipation of them building the facility. And so Brian Wildner, the uh, herd manager there, has always been really, really particular on picking bulls that he thinks are going to work in robotic facilities. So I'd say not only Resolve, but if you see a bull that has Blumenfeld in the prefix, use those bulls with confidence in a robotic facility. Uh, additionally, uh, I brought up a, a moment ago, I think Renegade's gonna be a great robotic uh, bull in terms of how he's, he's made. Uh, so uh, those are just a couple examples, but uh, if you want to see the bulls that fit that designation the best, the other thing I'll mention is if you look at our website, uh, we've just revamped all of our designations and our logos and uh, we've condensed it a little bit. Uh, we were probably not short on logos in this company, and we've kind of streamlined them uh, down to about six of them, and Robot Pro is one of those. And uh, uh, the bulls that, uh, that, meet the, that meet the needs of those, we're gonna have that. So I think you're gonna uh, really uh, uh, see that uh, be very useful to you. Uh, the new sire directory actually just came up online on the website. Uh, the, the, the the virtual copy uh, just about 10 minutes before I, I started this. So uh, you can go to our website, see the new sire directory. It looks very, very nice. Uh, all three, all these designations will go across all three product lines. So it'll make it a little bit easier uh, to navigate than maybe in the past. So you can see bowls of all product lines all together, uh, all with the same designations. So I think that'll be very, very good that way. Ben, got a question here from Ben Bassmore. I missed the type days of select. TPI doesn't last. I guess uh, I would say if you miss the type days of select, uh, I don't think they've ever left. And maybe I take that personally because I run showcase selections, but uh, a bull like King Doc to me is is a bull that that meets the needs of everyone. And he's, he's a bull that's gonna continue to do that. The other thing that Doc's gonna have a huge influence on is the fact that he is uh, has been a good sire father. We've used this bull heavily. Uh, bulls like Hancock and Hanford and Handsome. Uh, Doc Cole uh, from Scientific is one of my favorite bulls, uh, probably underutilized 
in our program. Uh, his mother is a, a Dorman daughter that's one of my favorite cows at Matt and Mandy's. Goes back to the debutante Ray Cow family. Uh, so when you have bulls like that, I, I think that we haven't uh, lost the type days of select. Uh, we just brought in two new bulls I'll talk about a little bit later in the showcase selections here. Uh, and Genomic Young Sires, Unix Select, uh, has, has been very, very popular here in the first couple of months and doing a great job. Uh, had a good day this week. Uh, Analyst Red, uh, again, breed leading kind of bull that everybody's flocking to. Uh, Warrior Red has made some of the, the highest selling calves uh, this spring in sales. So um, it may not be as big a part of the program as we used to because we meet the needs of every customer across this globe. But uh, we're never going to give up on type. And, and as long as I'm here, uh, I'll continue to run showcase selections to, to meet the needs of folks like yourself, Ben. And uh, the uh, just looking through here. Um, let's see. Um, let's see. What young sire combines type with production at its best? That's from Peak and Elk Dairy. Uh, good to see you here today. Um, I would tell you that uh, it's probably some of the dachshunds. Uh, Hancock, I think, is 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 very very special in his ability to to uh, combine high production at over a thousand pounds of milk and breed leading in his type. He's A two A two. He's BB cap casein. Uh, he comes from a marvelous cow family uh, up at Seamers's, and obviously a, a herd that I've got a very very close relationship with. But anybody that that I'll take through there, and you look at the Hanker cow family and look at Hanker again, who's fresh now for their for fourth or fifth lactation. I think we'll be a 95 point cow before it's all said and done, who's the grand dam of this bull. It's the combination of great type and sound matings and, and, and good sire crosses with great maternal lines that bake those kinds. So that's that's one that, that, that I certainly like. I think the other bull, uh, the two bulls that we've used really heavy is sire fathers, especially in the showcase again, would be uh, Sandy Valley Excalibur, Again, no uh, uh, same cow family as Copycat. Uh, his mother just went 91 points. She's a silver daughter. He's a King Royal son. So his ability to combine really good. And he had a beautiful day this week. He's over 2,900 on GTPI now and uh, had a marvelous day. And we've got some uh, Excalibur sons that will be coming out later this year. And then Peak Tropic, a bull that's sired by a, a, he's, from, he's a Peak Hotline son who's a top 10 TPI bull now and got a great maternal line. I've always liked that bull. We've got some sons that have got results, uh, been a very, very popular young sire for us. So that'd be just a couple of examples there. Uh, Ethan Schneider's got a question. How come no pole bulls? Well, we certainly have them. Uh, the, we, we talked a little bit this week on a couple of them. Uh, that uh, Lucky PP was a bull that we uh, will have in the accelerated only lineup. Uh, he's a bull that's got a lot of data now and was one of the high red pole bulls of the breed. Um, I can tell you this much. We have as much emphasis on pole right now as, as, as we've ever had, and, uh, and the coffers are full. We've got uh, uh, some bulls like Caffeine P and Limelight P. They're two of our highest bulls in, in the Genova Young Sires, and I would expect that those bulls down the line are, are going to uh, uh, have a good shot to be proven graduates someday. Uh, we've had a few of the Red Bulls that are pulled, uh, uh, got the, Ronald has been an amazing sire father for us. Uh, one of my favorite bulls, again, the Salvatore son. And in his situation, he's got a bull that's one of the high type bulls of the breed for red, and he's pulled. So we've put a lot of emphasis on the trait, um, but it goes through ebbs and flows. Sometimes you get uh, proven bulls who come through, uh, sometimes we don't, but I would say we're doing our level best. We even have a few pulled renegade sons that you'll see coming down the line uh, uh, sooner than later. Um, Daniel, Brazil, has got a question. I'm going to breed Tahiti heifers in the next few months. What's the best genomic bull to breed him to with no frazzle? And I'm going to go back once again. Uh, probably you need to use it in sex, but I would say the two best bulls uh, reside in our next-gen program, and that's Magnitude, uh, being a Casper from Elias. Uh, he's a different out, outcross kind of pedigree, uh, so he's – He's been a, a good bull in that respect. He's a high component bull, out cross pedigree, no frazzled in his pedigree. And then the other bull I would say on Tahiti's would be Renegade. Uh, using him as sex semen, uh, he, he's just, uh, they're some of the prettiest heifers out there. The Tahiti's have been some of the really good heifers out there. And so I'm uh, uh, very excited about what we're seeing there. 
Brian Granger got a question. With all the Renegade Suns, what Renegade Sun will improve others the most? Um, probably a bull that, a couple of the bulls that will be coming to you later this year. I'm really excited about um, two of them. One is named Sandy Valley Conway. Uh, you'll see him on the high-ranking young bull list. Uh, we're using him as a sire father at the moment. He's 3,042. Uh, his mother is a granite. That's a great young cow. And then a Draco behind that. And then uh, Sandy Valley Mogul Calamity that Greg would put in the top five greatest cows that's ever lived at Sandy Valley. So he's a bull that you can expect later this year. We're using him as a sire father at the moment. The other bull that's really high in utter composite of the Renegade Sons is a bull named Cookie Cutter Logistics. And Logistics is, again, from the Cookie Cutter cow family. Um, but uh, before the base change here, he's still uh, quite good on, 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 in fact, I can grab it right here. Logistics is, uh, he's 1.85 on Utter Composite, and that's far and away the best of our mating sires for Utter Composite of the Renegade Sons at the moment. And a, a, again, a bull that will get released later this year. He's a legacy, he's a Renegade from a Helix. So something uh, uh, j just uh, coming out, and I see that uh, Diana Stocker just asked about Logistics. And uh, like I say, he'll be he'll be getting released later this year. We're using him as a sire father at the moment. So hopefully that answers your question, Brian. And uh, so like I say, and I think this is maybe a good time. Um, I mentioned next gen a couple times here, and the program has continued to uh, take off and done very very well. And uh, we're we're seeing a, a massive uptake on the program. And the good news is, is we're adding uh, several new bulls into the program. Uh, we have nine in the program now. You can check those out there at the front of our catalog. Uh, but this full, uh, there was two that we brought up here this week into the Next Gen program that I think are quite, quite special. And I wanted to talk about them just a little bit. And, and I know we get people from across the globe. Uh, there are several countries that Worldwide Sires has accepted uh, and has the paperwork right for the Next Gen program. Others will be coming online uh, later this year. So if your country isn't in Next Gen yet, uh, I can tell you the folks at Worldwide Sires are, are working on that. But the two bulls I want to talk about today in Next Gen, first one being a bull, a 7H15115 Aurora Ragnar. Ragnar is a solution son from a flagship. Next stands a Monterey. And Reddit Dave Harvatane is out in, in uh, Western New York, a bull that we've used very heavily as a sire father. Again, he's a bull that's a BB Kappa casing bull. He's a bull that uh, at 128 pounds of combined fat and protein, but where this bull really shines again, and you're going to hear us talk about this a lot going forward, not just today, but down the line, mastitis resistance. As we need to have cows that, get, that can take care of themselves on their own without intervention, as the world is asking us to have a cow that doesn't need uh, antibiotic treatment, we feel as a sire team that this is really, really hard or it's one of the things that we really need to work very hard at and and so that you're going to see a lot of our bulls are really really uh, exceptional in mastitis resistance and and ragnar is one of those bulls he's three on, on mastitis resistance through cdcb he's uh exceptionally good he's 107 on zoetis mastitis he's 2.71 on his scs the combination of those bulls are really what we're looking for dramatically to do that the other nice part about Ragnar is he's a 6.5% Cavanese bull that's over, he's 2940 in his GTPI and 831 in net merit. So he's a breed leader in both those categories. But he's also still over a point on utter composite, but he's a bull that reduces stature. He's minus 1.07 on, on uh, stature. And I think, again, for those that are wanting a more moderate sized cow, uh, this bull is going to do it. He gets the utter traits right. He brings them down uh, in terms of the stature side of things. And I think he's a, a really good, uh, one of our best solution sons. I'm very excited that this bull is coming into the lineup. Um, the, uh, the other side, the other bull I'll talk about, and then I'll get to your question in a second here, Brian, is 7H15097, T-Spruce Nugent Granada. And he's, again, right tight to 2,900, a bull that uh, uh, is from one of our best partner herds up in uh, Richmond, Minnesota, uh, Arnie and Chris Grinis at T-Spurs. He's a Nugent son who's a little different. Nugent's, Nugent was an outsider son that we used as a sire father that unfortunately never made semen that our lab deemed uh, quality to sell to you as a customer. So he, 
He was a high ranking bull. He was an outsiders from a Damaris, but we never marketed the bull because of his semen quality. But we use him as a sire father. His mother is a frazzle. And the next dam is an 86 point Veltus via head daughter. And then back into uh, the next dam to Shamrock and then shot Mindy. So we're back into the Mindy Cow family. But this bull, rock star on production. He's 2193 of milk. He's 61 of protein and he's 151 CFP. He's plus again 1.8 on, on mastitis resistance, 104 on zoetis and he's 1100 on his DWP, which is really, really high uh, after the base change here. Again, a bull that's minus a point on stature, but still does the other traits right, makes very balanced cows. I've always been a big fan of this cow family. There's a bunch of sisters to this frazzle um, in not only T Spruce, but in other herds. And it's been a really good fork of the Mindy cow family. So these two bulls are the newest two additions to the Next Gen program. And uh, so that's where we're at. So. Brian, you asked the question, why do we have to pay to join the program? And it's a good question. It is um, because this is a members only club and it's a little bit like going to Costco or Sam's Club uh, and you have to pay a membership fee to get in and then that gives you certain uh, access to products and be able to go in. I'm not a member of Costco, so I can't go to a Costco store. Um, so if I paid that membership fee, I could do that. So this is similar in that respect. And uh, so that's the reason that there's a membership fee that's attached to it. It has to do with uh, access to the program and through our legal team, uh, they explained to us that this was the best way to administer this program where we wanna get bulls to the marketplace faster. These two bulls here are just, they were born in uh, December of 18 and uh, November of 18. So they're just about 18 months old right now and they're coming to the marketplace. Uh, in order to do that, we need to have some level of genetic protection on those. And in order to do that, we needed to start a membership program. So that's why we did this with NextGen. But it's to get these bulls to the marketplace sooner so that we don't have to wait till they're 24, 25, 26 months old uh, to, to layer in some level of genetic protection or get a head start in terms of start procurement. And it gives us our customer owners access to the bulls faster. And that's really what our goal of this program was. So that's that's why uh, it has a, a membership fee to it. And, and I encourage you to look at uh, uh, the next gen uh, rules and those kind of things uh, on the Selectsires website. Sign up, send you the, the Jordan Seamers will send you the contract out. And uh, the beautiful part is, is the semen is shipped right to your door. You place the order. Uh, it's direct ship from Plain City, Ohio. Uh, so those these next gen bulls are bulls that are not on your uh, local sales reps. Um, uh, semen routes or trucks, but it's shipped directly from Plain City, Ohio. Um, you know, we talked a little bit about type a moment ago, and I wanted to uh, talk about a couple of new bulls that we released uh, here this week in the Showcase Selections Program. And the first one I want to talk about is in the red department. He's a bull that, uh, like Analyst Red, I think is going to be uh, quite popular throughout the industry. Is He's a 7H15210 Cycle Jail's Journey Red. He's an unstoppable son um, and a uh, Red Bull who is out of an 86 point Callan daughter who's up in Canada. The next dam is a 92 point full sister to Jacoby. So the same cow family that gave us Jacoby and Jordy Red uh, wanted to have a red member of this family. And so I had the opportunity to bring in Journey and, and, and he came in, the, in and just was released this month. He's 3.11 on utter composite. He's 2.49 on, on, on utter composite and 1.36 on foot and leg. Again, an absolutely perfect linear, doesn't have high pins, lengthens teats, good strength, tall but not too tall. And I think this bull, if he does like his two brothers, uh, two members of this family that make it show one and daughters across the country, uh, I look forward to seeing what this bull can do. And he's red. And so like warrior and analysts on the high type side of things, we've we really emphasized putting a lot of that in there. The other bull that I wanted to talk about is our first tattoo son. An undenied in tattoo, have done a marvelous job and made a lot of really, really good heifers. Uh, and, and, and anymore, it takes a really kind of unique bull to come in uh, that's a, to have sons of a bull because I think uh, we want to try to continue to have some level of diversity. But this bull, 7H15243, Welcome Classy, to me was a bull that just did enough things right that I wanted him in the program. And there's a couple of reasons why. Number one, 
He's from the chamomile cow family, and we didn't have anything from that maternal line. Mother's an 86-point king royal daughter that's out at Billy Peck's, and then the next dam's an excellent doorman, and then chamomile herself. And obviously, the ch chapters could be written about how good that cow family is and what it's done, and so we thought that that was a, a great addition. The other thing that this bull does, right, right in line with what I said a few moments, moments ago, is that he's a mastitis resistance rock star. He's 262 on, on uh, somatic cell score. He's 3.2 on CDCB mastitis, which is one of our best bulls in, the, in, in any lineup. And he's 109 in what is mastitis. So when he's A2A2, BB kappa casein, a mastitis rock star, and then still very sound at 2.69 on type after the base change here, over two points on others, a uh, beautiful linear profile, these, those were the kind of bulls that, that I wanted to bring in to the program. And I think uh, for all of us uh, united that, that we want to have those kind of balanced bulls with beautiful linear profiles. So that was uh, uh, a couple of the new showcase bulls. Uh, one that will be coming next month is a bull. I'll just plug him here quick. 7H15220 uh, Black River Crush, Black Silver uh, Crush Stand. He's a crushable son that's 3.19 on type. 3.16 on udders, and he is 18 on confirmation in Canada. So a bull, again, that goes back to a great, great cow family that I've always admired. He's a crushable from a doorman, and then Lyndon Wright Bradnick moving on. <laughs> and that cow's just always been a favorite of mine. So look for him uh, here in May. He'll be getting released then. Let's see, where are we at in questions? Yes, I am trying to be like a football coach today, Jimmy. I just figured that uh, uh, I wanted to make sure everybody could hear me, and, and uh, we had a couple of other conference calls. So in social distancing, I've, I've figured out that we need to use every tool at our fingertips. <coughs> uh, let's see. See if we got any other questions. Um, like I say, I wanted to make sure that uh, to send you to the Select Sire's website, um, like say our Sire directory is up there as of uh, about an hour ago. Uh, we'll continue to give you proof information there. Our communications team has been working overtime this week to get uh, new information, uh, whether it's the, the Facebook page of Select Sire's Accelerated Genetics did a great Helix video yesterday from uh, our good partner, Mike Santos out in California, a group of daughters that we just pictured out there in January. So continue to, to utilize our social media. It's been a great exercise for us uh, to, to, to bring you a message and be able to do that. Um, like I say, we're getting on about 48 minutes that we've been doing this. So uh, we probably will wrap up here in the next couple unless I get a couple more comments or questions. But uh, let me just say once again, uh, we really uh, uh, want to let you know that we're thinking about you every day. Um, I wish I was out on farms more than I am right now, but uh, for obvious reasons, uh, we're doing our level best to uh, follow every protocol that we can as a company. Uh, Dave Thorbon's done a marvelous job of leading us uh, through these times and uh, is doing not everything to keep you um, uh, safe as well as uh, us as employees, but we are out there to, to, to serve you the best we can. And, uh, and so he's uh, extremely good in that respect. Uh, one more question here, Jimmy, uh, on your bull, yes, Stan, uh, we're looking forward to him releasing at 3.16 on utter composite because I haven't seen all the rankings within the industry yet. Uh, I'm not exactly sure, but he is, um, uh, he, he's at, uh, 3.16 would rank him number two of all bulls at select sires. So I am pretty sure that he's right up there in the industry. And, uh. So Brian, you're asking a question here. What are our breeding goals here at Select Sires? Um, I think what you have there is, is a pretty good uh, 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 index that you just pointed out there and what you're trying to do. Um, in the grand scheme of things, um, balance is the best answer I can give you on that, Brian. It isn't a, a specific um, breeding goal per se other than balance. Uh, we were a 23 million unit company now meeting markets across the globe. Um, so we're trying to find bulls that are going to fit each and every one of those markets. Is there a base stock 
uh, to the select sire stew, yes. And that is good udders, cavities, good production, and, uh, and sound and, and health and fitness. And as, as I said, we're really focusing on mastitis traits because I really, as a team, we really believe that that's where we're headed in the future. So, but by the same token, we had a discussion this morning internally about grazing sires. Um, so they've been really, really uh, good as well. Uh, so we've got to find bulls and that's a very different bull than what, what your criteria there is. They need to be hugely minus on stature, hugely minus on milk, cavities, preferably black, high fertility. So it's a very different uh, set of bulls that fits some uh, specific grazing markets than it would say here in North America. But if we want to meet that market, we've got to have a bull that meets that. So we really try to find bulls that are going to find unique niches throughout the industry. Uh, but our main focus, I would say, is balance. A couple other questions I see here. Uh, what is Select Sires doing to help farmers in these times? Uh, I can tell you that uh, as we went through sire summaries this week and we priced bulls, don't think for one minute that that wasn't uh, in our minds as we did that, as we priced the bulls uh, as, as Select Sires uh, uh, Federation. Uh, we really did our level best to try to keep our pricing as, as competitive as possible. Uh, we lowered the prices on several bulls that weren't necessarily uh, data changes, but we felt that we needed to do something to help. So we're doing everything in our power to do that. Uh, and, and we're also doing everything we can to uh, keep our employees out on farm uh, in the critical areas. Uh, people like myself at the moment need to take a little break from being on farm, but our technicians are out there breeding cows every day. Our sales rep are delivering product to the producer that needs it. So those would be just a couple of things that we've done uh, in that regard. Next question from David Ferguson. Hey, great question. Have you seen any Jedi Pharaohs? You can see me light up on that. Pharaoh's a bull that I was hoping would have enough data to, to uh, uh, graduate here. He did not, he didn't have a type proof yet, uh, but his number is 250H12975, if I remember right. And Pharaoh is, again, a bull that I have big expectations for August. So I guess that's as we finish up this afternoon, it's good to have that. Pharaoh's a bull, I've seen a, a gaggle of them over the last several months. And there's a herd in just east of me here, one of our partner herds, has three of them that are 86 points or higher already. And there's several more that are fresh that weren't long enough to get scored. My partner has several of these that are milking. I just saw some of those last week. Very, very exciting. Incredibly balanced cows, udders way up above the hocks. They move extremely well on their feet and legs. I'm really excited about Feral. And the other reason that I've always liked this bull is I would tell you outside of Rubicon Eternity, who's a sire and mother of many of our sons uh, in the program and soon to come into the program, arguably one of the best cows at Sandy Valley is, is Belisto, uh, uh, the mother of, of, of Farrell. Uh, that cow, Belisto Paradise, uh, today has her up often on their Facebook page. She is truly, truly, truly a great cow, traces back into a great cow family, then an Uno behind that. So keep stay tuned on him, David, because I think you're going to have me more information in uh, in uh, coming here in August. Um, let's see. Do I have a favorite solution, son, that's not in the next gen program? Um, it's a good question, Rodney, and I'm just going to give me a second here to do my uh, little, little sort. It's the beauty of this is I can can do that. Um, and uh, I can go like this, and I'm gonna sort this um, through the program. Um, I would tell you that uh, I'm, I'm pretty excited about a bull named Seamer Solution Time that we just released. Um, I think this is a, a, a bull that you look at his linear, he's very, very solid. Um, he does a great job. Again, mother's an 86 point, uh, uh, Delta, then a numero uno, and he's a bull that I really, really uh, am excited about. Uh, this bull, he's got a beautiful linear profile. Staying in the Seamers mode of this, and, and not to just pick up my friend Dan, but Seamers Solution Rozzy is another bull that just got released here this week. I like him very well. 7H15105, uh, very sound linear, moderate, 2.39 and other composites, really high in, in, this, in this situation. So those would be a couple of them, Rodney, but but I am a big fan of, of most of these 
um, these solution sons because uh, the solution daughters were look great. We're mating a lot of them right now, and they look really, really good. Um, another question here, uh, what's your idea about the new version of WMS? Um, I'm not as familiar with every nut and bolt of the new program, uh, but in talking to the to uh, the evaluators, I think we're getting it up and running. I think it's uh, the the logic of it is sound. I have sat in in some meetings and looked at the logic of the mating matrix and those kind of things because I spent uh, 15 years of my life behind cows working the WMS program before sire acquisition, and so um, I know the guts of the program pretty well. Uh, the old program. And as they've explained to me the logic of the new program and, and the mating matrix and how it's coming up with the matings, I feel really, really good about it. I think it's going to have more customizable uh, opportunities to it than maybe the, the previous program had. Uh, it's going to probably be launched in versions like your iPhone that you get a software update of 1.0 and then 1.6 and 1.7 and 1.8. I think Brian Coyne and the, and the IT team are going to continue to work on that. Uh, but uh, I think uh, it's going to be well worth the wait that we get uh, everything right. Uh, it's been a labor of love for a lot of people, and I'm looking forward to seeing that. Uh, Kyle Gates' question, are we taking any more Helix Suns? Um, good question. Yes, we probably will be. Uh, Mark Kearns has been using the bull quite heavily in the art program, uh, and calves are soon to be born. Uh, so we did go back and use them there. Uh, I had a question about that from someone else today. Uh, did do some plan meetings on him again uh, last summer. I think uh, he certainly warrants us doing more. The good news for us is that uh, we've been able to have a pretty good influence on the bull. Uh, and I'm just going to pull up here uh, some of the Helix Suns because you asked about that as well. We're seeing a really good influence of this bull, both maternally and paternally. Uh, you'll see a lot of the new bulls that are getting released are going to have Helix dams. Uh, much like the Chase Bull, it's in Next Gen program. His mother's a Helix, just is fresh the second time. And so I've been doing a really good job in that respect. I'm a fan of every single one of our Helix sons. Uh, Milford is a bull we did go back and use quite heavily as a mating sire because he's his highest net merit son and goes back to a Delta uh, from Jonathan Lambs. And, and, and he and uh, Forte are both brothers. And uh, and so they're they're that mating seemed to really click uh, the Helix Delta cross and, and, and did a really nice job. Um, I see another of the questions was A2A2. And I hate to tell you, or yes, we do. There is a bull named King's Ransom downtown uh, that is a, uh, he is a Helix from a King boy and he is A2A2. His number is 7H14306. And he was uh, sampled in January. so. Um, or it's January 19. So he's a bull that, that is A2A2, Andrew, and hopefully uh, that's a bull that can fit into there. Well, folks, we're right at about 58 minutes. Uh, it's been my pleasure to, uh, to spend some time with you again today. Stay safe. We're all going to get through this. It's been a long road, but I think uh, better days are ahead. And uh, I appreciate everybody tuning in today. Uh, if you do have some other questions, uh, uh, we'll be happy to answer those uh, via the SelectSire's uh, Facebook page here. But again, always a pleasure to spend some time with you at Proof Time. And so I'm going to sign off here today. But uh, again, thank you for joining us and uh, appreciate all your uh, support to SelectSire's. Thank you.